Jackson. David Anderson, and I'm from the town of Livingston in New Jersey. Uh, please don't hurt me. I've actually gotten like threats just from saying that. Uh, I have like two distinct memories growing up of music. One, I don't even remember what the music was, but my dad used to put on a bunch of just like Van Morrison or like uh, he had like, this big like five disc like CD player, and he had like I think like the like the Eric Clapton Crossroads CDs and um, like a bunch of Van Morrison records, and he used to just put those on. Um, and he only told me that those were the records, like, in retrospect. I remember just hearing music coming out of the stereo system and just running around the house like a madman. Uh, and then later on, I remember my mom putting on, like, Elvis records. And that's, like, that was my first memory of, like, like really liking music, was, like, sitting in front of this little boombox we had and, like, playing this Elvis CD that they, uh, my mom had gotten for me. <laughs> I currently just, uh, I just play guitar. I'm kind of just focusing on that. Freshman and, yeah, all freshman year I was playing guitar and I was singing in the school choir, but uh, I haven't really sung like regularly uh, in years now. So I started off um, my freshman year in Littell Hall uh, and I had, mo I had moved in because I did the two-day orientation like beforehand. So I had been in like the empty dorm and I was kind of just like watching all the people on move-in day, uh, just move in and that kind of thing. I was just walking up and down the halls, like skulking and looking at people's parents. Uh, and I heard, like, down the hall from me, I heard this one guy playing uh, this Nirvana song, Polly, uh, with his roommate. Uh, he was playing on guitar, and his roommate was playing bass. And I thought, this is my chance, because Polly's a song I know pretty well, uh, and Nirvana's one of my favorite bands. Um, so I was like, hey, you mind if I come and play with you guys? Uh, he said, sure, grabbed my guitar, ran back down. We jammed on a, we jammed on a few Nirvana songs. We played a... Then we just kind of went, we played some like old blues licks and that kind of thing. Uh, so I was hard off doing that, and eventually, um, yeah, I just kind of kept playing with not the not the bass player, but I just kind of kept playing with that uh, guitar player ever since. Uh, his name's Anthony Vasier, and he's now the other guitarist in Banderson. Uh, and he, he's, it's, it's been like fantastic playing with him. Like I've seen like a lot of guitarists come through here and like, I will say he, he is one of like, he's an accounting major so nobody like freaking knows who he is but like he's probably one of the best there. Uh, and one of the best here. Uh, so I've been playing with him and then my, my, my neighbor um, played a little bass in high school and he mentioned this to me which was his mistake and I kind of just bullied, into, I bullied him into uh, coming and jam with us. And eventually we found uh, a drummer uh, in the basement of, or no, in the first floor of Littell bullied him into playing with us too. So uh, yeah, just jamming and lots of harassment. That was how the band started. <laughs> Uh, my girlfriend was mocking me because I was really excited when, like, we first, uh, the four of us were first getting together to jam. Uh, it was me, Anthony, the guitarist I mentioned before. Sam was my like my my uh, neighbor and the bass player, uh, and Sean is the drummer in the basement. I was we were all I was going. Uh, we had booked a rehearsal room for us, and we were all going down. I was really excited. Had like half an hour, uh, and she happened to call me up, and I said, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna be in a band. I'm gonna be in a rock band." And she started like mocking me. She's been like, oh, you're David Banderson, now you're going to have Fandersons or something like that. And she rattled off like four other like cheap Anderson puns. And I was like, eh, fuck you. All right, guys, where does a dog go when he loses his tail? Not this a, retail a retail store. <laughs> Spring 2015, we were in the Battle of Bands. We needed a name, so we were just kind of like, we couldn't think of anything like serious or whatever. So someone just said, let's just go with Banderson just for giggles or whatever. So we did that and None of us ever came up. Well, the plan was always to come up with like a more serious name when we thought of it, but we just never really did. So it stuck. So as much as I think it's funny that we were like, we don't take ourselves too serious when we have this kind of like gag name that gets people to be like, eh, ah, Banderson. Uh, I wish it was something that was that had that same effect that wasn't like my name. 
but that's how the, that's how the name came about, was my girlfriend mocking me. <laughs> There have been times, like some songs I've written, uh, I tried to like model after like an Allman Brothers song or something like that. Occasionally I try to model stuff after like, um, like Nirvana or, uh, like, or like the Birthday Party is a band I'm really into right now. Um, but when other people are like writing with us, like when the other band members are trying to write, they're not trying to, uh, to write, like, they're not trying to sound like anybody. We're just trying to sound like this kind of ideal notion of what the song should be. If that makes any sense. I think Dwayne Allman had like a really good tone, and Dickie Betts. Uh, those are two big names that I realized were really trying to sound like fresh, uh, freshman year of college and senior year of high school. And uh, yeah, a lot of the time, uh, early on, I was I was trying to sound like um, I don't really so much sound like Kurt Cobain because Kurt Cobain didn't really take like he wasn't really a good guitarist. He was a good songwriter. So for a while, I was trying to write songs like Kurt Cobain. Over the over the summer, I was trying to learn a few Django Reinhardt songs. He's been a big influence on me even before I really liked jazz. He was just kind of this kind of standalone jazz artist. He played with this uh, this little like quintet, uh, like this. He played this with like this quintet and like all the little clubs in France. <laughs> That's kind of the thing. Uh, Sam, the bass player, is actually graduating a, a year early. Um, we're uh, we're working on recording like a lot of the new stuff we've written like this year and like within the past few weeks. We're trying to get all that stuff recorded before he graduates. Um, but yeah, really, it's a college band. I mean, like we really love playing with each other, uh, and we'll, we're certainly going to continue playing with each other once he graduates uh, this semester. But. Um, We've talked about it, and, I, and like none of us have really want to like continue this past college. Certainly, continue with music, but um, once Sam, like when Sam said he was going to graduate early, we uh, it was kind of, this is a pretty crass comparison. It's kind of like uh, how Led Zeppelin broke up when Bonham died. Like you can't really continue on with the name that like he helped build. That's kind of how we feel about it. Uh, Sam graduating to keep continuing as Banderson uh, just wouldn't feel right. It'd feel kind of sacrilegious. So. Our ultimate goal right now is to play O-Fest, do really well at O-Fest, uh, and just to get all our music, just to get like the Banderson catalog recorded, uh, just available. So we want to send this song out to all of you guys right here. We've got a lot of friends in the crowd today, and this is our last set ever. Thanks for all the support, all the good times. I want to shout out to my man Vasir over here. Sam's graduating, so we all wish him the best of luck in the world. Yeah, that's right, everyone go it. I promise things won't go well. I'll be back shortly. This is the last one, so uh, yeah, here it is. Have some fun. Picture myself crying kind of drunk later. Just like, yeah. 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 Yeah.